When using LUT, you can specify a local address or a remote standard SMTP email address. So we're logged in on Linux CVT Serve 4 as user root. Which MUT tells us it's in user bin? We launch MUT, and here we see messages from Logwatch as well as one that appears to be for the certificate for site1.linuxcvt.internal. And this was sent as a result of executing gen key, and it tells us that it will expire in 29 days, which is fine. Besides all of that, let's delete everything in MUT. To delete everything, execute upper D and use a regex pattern of dot star, which means all matching characters zero or more times. And that applies a D or a delete directive to all 19 messages. This will delete everything, and if we quit, it will prompt us to purge the 19 messages. Now, when we enter, we will see no messages. So again, very simple to delete messages and to mark them. To send a new message, press M instead of M, which would be a little more intuitive, but M is used to compose a new mail, and we'll send that new mail to root, who we currently are logged in as. Testing local delivery. And notice below, MUT echoes where exactly, or the path to the mailbox that it currently has open. Var spoon mail root, which is stored in a local variable named mail. If postfix is set up in its default configuration, it uses mbox format, which is what's represented here in var spoon mail root. However, if you reconfigure postfix to support mailder, which is a superior way of storing messages, which splits out the messages into distinct files, then you'll need to configure MUT using the mailder environmental variable instead of mail to point it to the location of your mailder, which is usually beneath the user's home directory, beneath a directory named mailder, or mail, or something similar. So wherever Postfix delivers mail, and however it does so, you need to instruct your mail user agent, which in this case is MUT. And with that said, it launches us into VI, the default editor. To insert a line, go ahead and press I and then type. This is a test or something along those lines. When complete, you press escape. Then shift colon returns you to the prompt. WQ writes and quits the interface. And now we have a message that will be sent in PGP clear text to root at LinuxCBT serve 4.LinuxCBT.internal. So by virtue of typing in root, the fully qualified domain name was appended to both the sender and recipient's email addresses. The subjects there, no CC or BCCs have been specified, although we could impact them using C for CC, B, BCC, so on and so forth. We could attach an item if we'd like, using A to attach a file. But barring no additional features or desires, we can go ahead and send this message. But before we do, which is indicated using the Y option, also note that the text, the actual body that's to be included, and since it's text, it'll be included in the body of the message, is stored in the forward slash temp directory as MUT, followed by the name of the host, followed by a unique identifier. We did mention earlier in our studies that temp is a location that is flagged with T, so it is the type of directory where users cannot clobber other users' files, and is a general all-purpose directory for storing items such as mail attachments. So if you attach a file, it will be spooled to temp, or if you create a text inline message, it will also be spooled to temp, and then once sent out, it will be included in the body of the message, or if it truly is a separate attachment, then there will be an attachment. With that said, let's press Y to send the message, and this sends it off. Now, what exactly happens in the background? I've moved the arrow key up, and we see the message. And we know that it's new because it has an end flag. And if we press Enter, we'll see the contents of the message. Well, before we get into all of what's happening in the background to deliver the message, which is truly postfix related, we see the headers, or the header, that is, which includes multiple items when the message was sent, who it was delivered to, who it was originally sent to, because Postfix, if it performs a translation using the virtual table or the alias table, will translate the message from who it was originally meant for, let's say sales at the fully qualified domain name, 
to the ultimate user if there's some sort of translation. In this case, no translation is necessary. It's the same original and two email address. And again, the date's included, who it's from, who it's to, the subject, the user agent is also included, and the body is included. Now behind the scenes, what actually transpires? If we quit MUT for a quick moment, and we take a look at var spool mail, we'll see the various mailboxes. In this case, only one for root. It's currently empty because we didn't save the message. It ultimately gets stored in root's home directory in inbox format. When MUT sends a message, really what it makes is a call to send mail. Send mail is available to all users on the system, but a call is made, and when that call is made, send mail, which is a postfix plugin, and it is executable, that's listed in long form LSL so that you see the permissions on it. The send mail binary is a binary which links, as you can see, to alternatives MTA, so LSL, ETC, alternatives, MTA. This is a Red Hat convention, a Red Hat way of doing things. And then it ultimately points to user sbin sendmail.postfix. So it's a symlink. So when we finally get to the file, we see that it's owned by the user root and the group root, but it's also executed by everyone else, which is why we're able to execute it. So what calls sendmail, the binary, sendmail, which is provided by postfix, places the item into the postfix queue. Postfix, because it is running, PSEF, grab either post or master will reveal it, picks up the item, the queue manager notifies and it picks up and then it sends or delivers the message locally and if it is to deliver it remotely, then Postfix will use its SMTP client, which is a separate process, to deliver it. So again, RPM query list Postfix reveals the embedded items. There are multiple binaries responsible for multiple jobs. Scroll up through past the documentation. All these user lab exec items that you see here are responsible for different things. Got a local deliver, an SMTP client versus the daemon. The SMTP D listens to port 25 or whatever port you indicate. The SMTP is a client which will send your message to an SMTP server on behalf of the sending application such as MUT or Evolution or a connecting client using let's say Outlook Express or even Outlook. So the message was delivered locally directly into the queue by SendMail and then Postfix moved the message into the appropriate user's mailbox which is located in var spool and let's just go through our history var spool mail into the user's mailbox. Now it's empty at this stage because the MUT program moves mailbox messages into the user's home directory into a file named mbox which you can cat because it's simply a text file. There's the original message, this is a test, it's not encrypted, so on and so forth. So that's what happens behind the scenes. So we've configured or we've tested local mail delivery using MUT. Let's test delivery to one other user. We'll launch MUT once more. M for new message. We'll send it to Linux CBT. Testing delivery using MUT slash postfix. And it propels us once again into VI, which we'll use I to insert. And we'll just indicate test, test, test. Escape, shift, colon, WQ. And then Y to send the message. Again, MUT has translated Linux CBT to mean, the local user that is, Linux CBT at the FQDN of the local host. Our email address has been translated to mean the local user who we're logged in as at the shell, followed by the fully qualified domain name of the host. Why to send? And we can quit, and from a separate shell as the user of Linux CBT will be able to read the message. Now, to determine if it was delivered, if we LSLTR var spool mail, we'll see momentarily, a new file has been created for the user Linux CBT, and it's 738 bytes. So we don't need to use MUD as Linux CBT to confirm it, but if you'd like to, we'd SSH in locally. So SSH is Linux CBT at localhost, and attempt to authenticate. And once in, we'll launch MUT. And it tells us home Linux CBT mail doesn't exist. MUT wants to create this directory, and there's that new message. Testing delivery using MUT. We can use R to reply to the message. And each menu that you're in is, in, is context sensitive. 
So when you're in, when you're viewing a message, then you can reply, view the attachment, or exit using the various options. So we'll reply. This will also propel us into VI unless we have a different editor. And in the body, we'll just say, got it. Escape, shift, colon, WQ, then Y to send. The message will be returned to root at linuxcbt server 4linuxcbt.internal. And then we'll quit, and then quit the interface altogether. We'll exit the SSH shell, and again, we can confirm using LS that root mailbox has been updated. And as you see, it's 949 bytes. And in LinuxCBT's mailbox, which we can take a look at using LSLTR, we see that a file has been created, mbox. A directory has also been created named mail, but subdirectories are generally used, when you see a mail subdirectory, is generally used for mail during related messages. Also, we did mention that there are variables set, at least a mail variable set, and optionally a mail dir variable set. Execute set grep case insensitive mail, and you'll see what's set. Mail is set to var spoon mail and the name of the user. So when you log into a fresh shell using SSH, the mail variable is set. Mail check is also set. So every 60 seconds, MUT will check to see if there are new messages and refresh the interface when you're within MUT. Or in this case, the shell will check every 60 seconds and tell you if there's new mail. So if we're idle for 60 messages and new messages come in, then the shell will tell you as opposed to MUT. It makes use of the shell, that is, the mail check variable. So with that said, we can deliver locally. Now let's move on to the next task, and that is to configure postfix to receive messages from remote systems. So there are a few things we need to do here. We need to ensure that postfix listens to all interfaces by setting the INET interface variable. So set INET interfaces equal to all. This will ensure that it listens to it being postfix listens to all IP addresses, or you can set it to a specific routable IP. In addition, we need to set my destinations. So set my destinations equivalent to any domains that we should route messages for, such as Linux CBT dot internal. Let's go ahead and modify the primary config file. In etc, we'll use nano main.cf, and that's postfix, etc postfix. And then we'll search for my dest, which will lead us to the area where the routing of domains occur. And we'll see where the variable gets set momentarily. We just have to keep scrolling through this interface. And we see reload, reload domains, many other variables. You can determine who may relay off your system. And we'll keep going through. And right now, we're only 39% through the document. So let's keep going through it. Scroll up to the top. And we'll scroll through one, one page full at a time. The, the Q directory is var spool for postfix. This is where messages will be routed beneath the postfix top level directory. The command directory is sbin. The daemon directory is user live postfix. The owner of messages is postfix by default. And we'll keep searching one page full at a time. And we should be searching for my destination without the dollar sign. Here's the INET interfaces. Let's copy and paste this using control K, control U. We'll comment the one which reads localhost and change it to all. And then keep moving forward. You could again specify a distinct interface. Here's the my destination variable without the dollar sign. And there are also some suggestions for how you may indicate my destination, which includes but not limited to setting my destination to my host name. My host name will translate to the FQDN, which is Linux CBT Serve 4. Linux CBT internal, which is why by default Postfix accepts messages constructed by MUT to a username followed by the FQDN of the local system. It also accepts messages to localhost dot my domain, so localhost dot Linux CBT internal, and also messages destined to user at localhost. If you want to handle a specific domain, then cut and paste the default, comment one of them out, 
so that you have it in the event of any issues. And then append using a comma separator following the delimiter used, but commas and spaces are supported. And it tells you above, separated by commas and or white spaces. But to be consistent, we'll just use a comma and indicate that we want to support the domain linuxcdt.internal. Another way to do this is to assign my origin to